This is the Seven Figure Standard Podcast, hosted by Arash Vasugi and Mikey Stiller, with mindset and strategies to help you break through and create personal freedom. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Seven Figure Standard Podcast. I'm Mikey Stiller, joined by my co-host, Arash Vasugi, and we are thrilled to be back with you for another episode. Today, we're going to talk about something so good, going from good to great. So, Arash, how are you? I'm great, Mikey. How are you? I am great, and I would love for you to kick us off on this topic. Well, you know, one of my, my favorite books that I've studied over the last couple of years is by Jim Collins, and the book is uh, Going From Good to Great. He says, good is the enemy of great. Now, somebody might be listening to that and saying, I don't want that. Great. This episode's probably not for you, because, um, you know, I think we all have greatness inside of us. And we've got to untap it. And good is the absolute enemy of great. I would agree with Collins. You know what good is? Keep doing what you've always been doing. Now, you got to a certain level, but you're still coming from your past self. So you're working, doing the same activities, having the same thinking, saying, I'm going to increase by 10%, let's say, um, over the year. Uh, But great is different. Great is special. You know, when you see like somebody, like an athlete, they're just special. They're just different. Mm -hmm. Well, I think every one of us is special, but we don't tap into it because we settle for good. And think about that picture in your mind when I say you just know, like they're just different, you know, Well, why are they different? It's not just talent alone. And you'll watch somebody in business who's an entrepreneur or a singer or an actor. They're just in the spirit automatically. And that's what all of us want to get to. But in order for us to go from good to great, we're going to have to let go of 80% of who we've been. Now, I want everybody to let that sink in. You know, another one of my favorite books is by Koch, um, The 80-20 Rule. And 20% of our efforts are creating 80% of our results. Now, think about that. What about that other 80%? That's your past self. That's what we have to release. And... Not everybody wants to release that. Some people just want to 1x, 2x, you know, um, double. That's fine. Um, But I'm giving you the key strategies in order to to let go. Um, What if I told you right now to ask the question? I'm kind of laughing before I ask this because uh, we have such an interesting relationship to quitting, right? And what if I said, where do you need to quit in your life? Oof. <laughs> right? People right away. I was working with a client yesterday and I, I said, he's a great client of mine. Um, and I said, where do you need to quit? You could hear him just stop. And so I don't quit. And I, he says, I never quit. I said, you know what I've learned is the best in the world are really good at quitting. They're really good at quitting what doesn't serve them. They quit at the right time. You know, but we've been raised, never quit. And I agree. Like, I'm not telling you to quit at the good things. I'm not telling you to quit when you're plateauing. I'm telling you to quit at what doesn't serve you. That's the 80%. You know, where are you working busy but not productive? The busy stuff is where you need to quit. Let's say if you keep... um, Worrying about what other people think. That would be a good place to quit. What else would be a good to quit? Procrastinating would be a good place to quit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, lying to yourself. Be a really good place to quit. Really a good place to quit. Um, Not keeping your promises to yourself. I was just going to say negotiate and you read my mind. Um, that's exactly, that'd be a great place to quit. Not beating your personal best every day. Good place to quit. Letting yourself off the hook. Yeah, so these are ways that you want to look at what would be wise for me to quit right now. 
I'll tell you where you're going to know. If you're doggedly working too hard, that's going to tell you where you need to quit. That's going to tell you where you need to leverage. Um, you may say, Arash, I need to do that. I'm not telling you not to do that, but you don't have to be the one to do it. See, what we want to do is if we're going to go from good to great, we've got to start aligning with our future self. I was telling Mikey um, over the weekend, um, I said, everything everybody does is a complete distraction to their future self. And think about that. If you're not hyper, we've talked about hyper focus and hyper intentional. If you're not hyper intentional, you're not going to imprint your subconscious with what you want. You're going to imprint it by a distraction from the outside. So here's where we want to embrace our results. Our results are showing us a story if we're looking at it from a neutral place. Now, you can't go from good to great if we're not going to transform our past. I always say people set goals without looking at their past. They're setting them without looking at what they want, yet their past is going to keep creating the future if they're not letting go of that 80% that keeps the habits that keep repeating itself. So when, when you embrace a result from a neutral place, you're saying, okay, I really had a great July. I had a fabulous July. What I would do is say, why? What was I doing different that made July fabulous? Mm -hmm. Or you could go on the other end of the spectrum. I plateaued. See, when we embrace results, it gives us clarity. Clarity creates a picture in our mind. And clarity really connects to our awareness. Now, it allows you to see patterns. Are you looking at the patterns or your, is your head stuck in the sand, not looking at them? And the reason I want you to embrace the results, but not emotionalize them, you're coming from it from a completely neutral place. Imagine if I was asking you for advice, I'd say, you know, these are my results. What is your feedback? You'd give me feedback based on what I told you. That's how I want you to get the feedback. And what it does, it prevents you from making the same mistake over and over again. Now, let's talk about what is the greatest distraction for us. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Um, number one, we're either doing the wrong things out of habit. We're just doing what we've always done. Uh, number two, we think we're doing the right things, but we're not. We're not operating with intention. We're mechanically doing it. So there's no confidence. There's no swagger. There's no attitude. There's no definiteness, right? So that would actually be the wrong thing too. Um, and we haven't identified what the right things are. These are the, these are the obstacles in our way. So when you embrace the results and say, listen, these are the habits, the actions, the disciplines of great. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to go from good to great. You know, that's the only way you're going to go there. Um, you, know, you said something earlier, you said people settle for good instead of going for great. And I think the word settle is so good there because there's so many things that every single individual is naturally good at. There's things that they're good at without really having to try. And do you think that they stay good because of comfort or because of knowledge? You know, you're a performance coach. And so your job with all of our clients is to unlock that next level. There are some that are good. There are some that are great. And there's always another level, no matter what. How do you unlock that? And is it what's holding them back? Comfort, knowledge or something else? It's their goal, number one. And then it's they're obsessed with their past self or their current self. Mm -hmm. They start another thing that holds people back is they drink their own Kool-Aid that keeps them good, that doesn't allow them to go to great. Um, you know, I, I'm reading this book right now called The Dip um, by Seth Godin. I love it. I think it's a small book, but it's a great book. And it talks about, like, I'll give you an example. Like if you look at um, magazine covers of uh, men's fitness, women's fitness, and 
Godin talks about it. He goes, you know what the difference is? There's a lot of people who wanted the type of bodies those people had, but they stopped. He calls it the dip. He stops where they plateau and doesn't keep persisting. These people, this is my word, understood the law of 100, doing something 100 times. Um, and so they understand deliberate practice. Even when they plateau, that's the greatest place to be because that's when you're about to make a quick jump where most people give in. And let's say somebody, I see it all the time, somebody starts creating great results, they take the foot off the gas mm -hmm. and then they go down. So why I say the goals, you want to create a goal that is impossible. Why do I say that? Well, if you're not stretching, you're not growing. And like, look at what a fixed mindset is. That's your past self or your present self. It could be either. A growth mindset is somebody you've never met yet. That's your future self. And when we set impossible goals, it gets us to understand we can't do it yet. We don't know what to do. Like my goal right now, I've never done before. And what it tells me is I don't have the confidence yet to do it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to get the confidence, but currently I don't have the confidence. And so that motivates me in a good way because I'm competitive with myself. I say, what do you mean you don't have the confidence? I want to grow that confidence into it. But the one thing I know is I'm capable of doing it. So we've got to really look at to create a great future, I mean, this goes back to several lessons ago that we've done. You have to master your past. And we want our past to be an education. We want it to be our asset so we don't keep making the same mistakes. And that's what's going to activate greatness. But most people do not spend the time to think about what they're doing. They're just doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's why at the foundation of everything, it comes down to two things. What do you really want in your current paradigm? Your current paradigm is how you're seeing the world. Like Mike, right now you and I are seeing the world completely different. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't make me right, doesn't make you wrong, okay? It's just different. So as we stretch into the person we wanna be, we have to make a connection with that person. And as we do that, all of a sudden, we're seeing it differently. All of a sudden, out of the blue, synchronicities happen. Why? Because we jump because we're not operating from that 80%. And that's why I say we've got to let go of that 80%. A lot of people are scared because they're married to their 80%. They're married to their processes. But what if I told you right now? By the end of the year, you could literally create two massive quantum leaps if you let go of that 80%, if you'd let it go. Um, and that's what's going to take you from good to great. I talk about this all the time. And if I ask the listeners, our consistent listeners, can you define to me what deliberate practice is? I hope you can. Because it is your greatest asset. Deliberate practice is not your current habits. It is your future habits. Mm -hmm. Your current habits is your past self. That's what your current habits are. And when we practice deliberate practice at our next level, at the highest version of ourself, that's how you practice deliberate practice. Um, that's how you're going to change the game. That's how you're going to tap in to great. Like, if I keep doing what I'm doing right now, the same way I'm doing it, all I'm doing is tapping into my 80%. So it goes back to my question, what do you have to quit at? What do you have to quit at that is no longer serving you? Is that the way you lead? Is it not committing to your daily goals? Is it not having a big goal and being satisfied with where you are? See, there's things that all of us, I'm no different than anybody else. I, I mean, if you would have listened to my conversations I have with myself, I'm always asking myself, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to quit? 
you know, and then another good question to ask yourself is where are you lying to yourself? What I have d d discovered over the past 20 years, I mean, 17 years of really doing this, but 20 years since I started studying this philosophy is we have to get so honest with ourselves to the level of brutally honest if we're going to have successful living. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to emphasize what's most important. What's most important is not our past self. It's not our present self. It's our future self. Now, I want you to ask yourself, because the majority of people right now, I say future self, they, they think they're going to live, this, their future self is who they currently are. It has no, it is not even close to who you currently are. But we've got to start making a connection with that future self. Just like if you had a friend. How do you make a connection with a friend? A new friend. You're constantly putting energy into that friend. So we've got to constantly putting energy into our future self. Well, how do you do it? You script every for 30 days. I'll tell you the exact assignment I gave one of our clients yesterday, Anne Marie. I said, I want you to write a letter to your future self every day for the next 30 days. I said, why? Whenever we write, it creates a deep connection. And what happens is you're going to, by day seven, you're going to start being aware, not, you're going to unconsciously be aware, oh, my future self wouldn't do this. And that's how you're going to get from good to great. So good. You know, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about approach and I think approach ties in perfectly here too, because the way that you approach your goals is going to determine how you respond or react whenever you come up to a plateau or a point of resistance. And if you have a good goal, if you have a goal that inspires you and is that a, and is a big goal that you're going to have to strive for, you're going to come up against points of resistance, which I know is against all the woo-woo people out there who believe that you just relax and think and manifest and it comes right to you. When you're working towards a goal, there are points of resistance and the approach that you have determines your attitude towards those and whether you give in or keep going. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. What we're talking about is awareness. And see, I'll give you a different idea. Most people, they hit the plateau they quit. Mm. When we hit a plateau, it's like, what's next? What is next? Uh, that's how you know the plateau is giving you a sign you're in the process of a quantum leap. But the plateau is very difficult if you don't know awareness, if you don't have the awareness. Most people say it's not working, so they quit too early. Now, I'm not suggesting you quit at the good things. I'm suggesting you quit at the bad things. But understand right now, if you're in the middle of a plateau, you're in a hell of a good place. You are in a hell of a good place if you keep persisting. And understand, you just need more repetition, more rewiring uh, that's going to break the plateau. Yeah. And uh, so don't look at a plateau as bad. Look at it is what is the most important thing I can keep doing? It could be doing the same things, just getting 1% better. You know, one of the best things we can all do for ourselves, a lot of people go, oh, this sounds good. It's that's It sounds good beating your personal best. What if you own that shit and that's all you did and you beat your personal best? That is the only goal. Like I was 1% better. Like, And I define what that 1% is. That's how you're going to go from good to great. And if we're doing this mechanically, you know if you are, because it's a heavy energy. If you're doing it mechanically, you're not moving the needle. You've got to let go. You've got to build that confidence through deliberate practice. Confidence is just letting go. The person who's most confident, they don't know if they're going to succeed, but they know. They don't know tangibly, but they know. I'm going to keep failing, 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 boom. But they do it with completely letting go of their past and present self. That's what confidence is. Uh, so if you want to get the rewards of the top 1%, you've got to develop the grit of the top 1%. You've got to develop the awareness of the top 1%. And don't be afraid 
to look at both the positive and negative. A lot of people are like, oh, this is positive thinking. I say, I was going to say something else, but I, I, <laughs> I will tell you, I think it's crap. I think it's accurate thinking. What I do know is negative thinking is going to impact you in a terrible way. So however you want to look at it, but I'm not afraid to find the negative because when I find the negative, I find the mistakes and then I can change them. A lot of people don't want to look at it. And I think you should look at it, but look at it once again from a neutral place. That's how you're going to get the greatest growth. Naraj, all of the foundational concepts that you teach really go into this idea so well. And so I wanted, I wanted you to quickly tie in philosophy and standard, because if you have the right philosophy and standard that you're working with every single day, this becomes natural. It doesn't become something that you have to like, you know, force or like work really hard at. I want to become great. I have to do X, Y, Z. Like it becomes part of who you are. We talk about that. Well, philosophy is ever changing and philosophy if you look at automatic operating system, that is your automatic operating system. Your philosophy is your unconscious attitude and how your story is determined. And so we want to ever change our philosophy. Like my philosophy has changed so much, even in the last six months, because I'm ever changing. That's been that's been a thing for me for, you know, at least 15 years, uh, a little more. Uh, standard is everything. And I was having ice cream yesterday with my daughter and she's doing this self-esteem camp right now. She's a, it's a girl's self-esteem camp. And I said, well, what did you learn today? And she's like standard. And I said, tell me what standard is. And she said, how we view ourselves. I said, what if I told you standard is the number one thing for you to understand? And she said, why? I said, because it's showing the world who we are. And I said, so um, what they're teaching you, I want you to pay attention to. Um, because standard is everything. Every one of us is working with our standard. Like personal growth to me is very sacred. Like I'm not satisfied with staying the same. I want to continue working with bigger and bigger ideas. Um, I know I can get a lot better. I know everyone listening to this is going to get a lot better if they take it their personal transformation seriously. Now, I was in London a few weeks ago, Mike, and I did this event, and I told everybody this. I said, there's two camps of people. There's one camp, they love information. They'll listen to podcasts, they'll read books, but they never implement anything. And so they, they stay the same way. And then there's this other camp, that is just hungry for transformation. Those are the people that hire the coaches. Those are the people who understand the opportunity cost of how they can leverage people with a higher awareness as mindset, their systems, their models, right? And so this information is only useful if you implement it. If you don't implement it, it's not going to be very useful. It'll be somewhat useful because it puts you in a better energy, um, but it's not going to create quantum leaps. You know, I have always set 90 day goals. I don't set yearly goals because I look at my, I look at transformation every 90 days. I believe I should create a quantum leap every 90 days. And that's been forever, you know, and it's funny, uh, the coach that we're working with, we were sitting down with him and he says, I look at 90 days as a year, you know, and I, I said, you know, if you study really aware people, people really making it happen, they demand a lot of themselves in a healthy way, not in a pressure, but in a healthy way. And they all think the same way. We should create an, a quantum leap every 90 days. Um, but why? Because if we put it so far out in the future, a year, 10 years, what we're doing is the way our brain works, we, we don't commit for that long. But you could commit for 90 days and say, I'm going to do a 90 day sprint towards this goal. Well, what it does, it builds confidence. It builds absolute confidence. And we want to create, to go from good to great, we've got to create little wins. What are little wins? A 30 day goal. And 
that's what we want to do. I was just thinking before I was saying it, I was like, if we don't have 30 day goals, if we don't have seven day goals and we don't have daily goals, we're missing the point of building our confidence. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm, I'm talking about some deep stuff today, but that's, what's going to create the real work. That's what's going to create the transformation. And I say it all the time uh, to all my clients. I, I tell them this. If you're a client of mine listening, this isn't going to be new. I say, if you work my model, my model works. But you can't work it 20% of the time. You can't work it 30% of the time. My model is simple. It's not hard. It's simple because the simple stuff is always the right way. Now, if you're listening to this and you're in that camp that says the first six and a half months, I've just, I don't know what I'm missing. I highly encourage you, get on a call with me, get on a call with one of my coaches and start working my processes with me. I guarantee you, I will get you to create a massive quantum leap. I will guarantee it. You know, and I always know when people taper off, you know, you could feel it in their energy. But what we want to do is, I steal this from my mentor. He used to always tell me this. He said, stop screwing around with your life. He said, you don't know how long we have. You've got to really think. And he got that so embedded to me. Like that became my standard. And I could hear it so loud because he would be firm with that. You know, and I want all of you to tap into great because greatness is inside of you. The old stories is what's holding you back because you haven't spent the time to transform the past. You know, how many people don't even know their story? Don't even know what they're protecting themselves from. That mm -hmm. would be a great point. And the thing that I've always learned about success, whether it's financial success, whether it's health, whether it's relationships, it all comes down to one thing. You, you decide who you're going to become. The people who earn a lot of money they decided they were going to earn a lot of money, so they were going to learn the law of compensation. They were going to learn how important mindset is, not just, oh, mindset creates success, but defining what it is and building their future mindset. So you're going to decide if you're going to go from good to great. I encourage you to do it because you're going to spend the time anyway. You might as well spend it creating an absolute successful life for yourself that is the life you want, not just what you think others have. Because if one person can do it, you can do it. Faraj, this has been an incredible episode and one that I assume people are going to want to listen to more than once because there's just been so many great ideas dropped in through the last 25 minutes or so. Why don't we go ahead and end how we always do with an action step? Well, before I do that, I, I hope I put some doubt towards your current beliefs. I hope I have gotten you to doubt a little of your current philosophy uh, because I promise you this, when you commit to creating the life you want fully, that's not intellectually, that is fully, and you start getting your conscious mind working for your subconscious, not the other way around, that's how most people have it, you're going to tap in to your genius. Uh, and I hope you take yourself on for the next five and a half months and really create a world-class life for yourself because you could do it in a short period of time. Now, the action step I want you to do, and it's going to be easy not to do this, I want you first to write out what is wise for me to quit? What is wise for me to let go of? First thing. And then I want you to write a letter to your future self every day for the next 30 days. You watch in two weeks, all of a sudden your decisions are going to be different. All of a sudden this type of actions you're going to do. But value yourself. Build the standard that you value your goals and dreams to actually do this. And that's what I would recommend. I love it. All right, Arash, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a rating and review. Share this with your friends and family. We would love to have them listening to the 7 Figure Standard podcast as well. And we'll see you next week with another episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of 7 Figure Standard. We hope you found the insights and strategies helpful on your journey to success. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform to help us reach more people like you. To learn more about Arash and Mikey and how Voss Coach & Co. can help you achieve your goals and reach new levels of success, visit VossCoachingCo.com. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of 7 Figure Standard.